in recognizing the humanity of our fellow beings, we pay ourselves the highest tribute. That is a quote from Thurgood Marshall, and this is the Inspired Poetry Corner. Good morning, good morning, and welcome you all. Welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good day. How are you today? Welcome. Thank you for being here. Welcome to another recital. This is November, and uh, the third Sunday has become a ritual now to spend Sunday. This is our Sunday morning church poetic service where we gather and we celebrate through poetry and each other as human beings. So it's really good to see you all. It's here. I'm sitting here in Toronto, Canada. We've got people from around the world, and it's a little cold here today, although we were lucky and we didn't get the snow that Buffalo got uh, over the last couple of days. So where we sit on the lake here in, in, in Toronto, everything kind of bypasses us. So I hope wherever you are, you're safe, your family, the ones that that, that matter in your inner circle are safe and, and, and warm. I was talking to Neymar earlier when she came on in regards to uh, how heating in, in the UK is, is going through the roof. So We've got some interesting times ahead of us. This is why it's important that we come together and remind each other that we're in this fight together. So anyway, I'm really looking forward to this uh, this month. I look forward to every month, but this month we get to feature a friend of mine and he is a friend, he's a brother. And so I'm looking forward to 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 hearing what Richard has to offer today. And then followed by, followed uh, to follow the feature, um, I don't know we have 10 to 15 what I call not ready for prime time poets that supports the feature. This is a recital. It is not an open mic. Um, I, 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 I scour through to see who's in attendance and sometimes I, you know, since I'm in, in the one in charge of the mic, I invite people to recite even if that they, you know, they didn't initially indicate that they wanted to. So, so, but look, let's just have fun. Let's enjoy. Let's be open with our mind, but open with our hearts, open our ears to really embrace and listen to what each other have to say, to welcome what someone has to say, whether you agree with it or not, just to welcome the fact that another human being wants to share and speak with us this morning. So I'm very grateful for the faces that have continued to support and for the new faces that are here. Having said that, just some quick housekeeping. We'll be flying at an altitude of 35,000 feet. You do not need to wear your seatbelt. Coffee is not mandatory, but highly recommended. And for those of you that like tea, knock yourself out. Uh, bathrooms are to the rear. <laughs> and... <laughs> but you know the drill. This is an open forum. I welcome all voices, but I will. I'm the one in charge of the mic. If I feel that you're going down a, a, a rabbit hole of hate, I will stop. All right? We can go side sidebar and talk, but I want this, I, I invite this space to be open and to be vibrant and to be loving and to be empathetic. We're here to support each other, and we show up to support the future of the month and the and the other poets that's going to share. All right? When uh, when you are on the mic, I invite everyone to be muted. I think I have everyone muted. I'll invite you to unmute your mic to show your appreciation, whether it's through snapping your fingers or round a, a thunderous rounds of applause. But whichever way, please show your appreciation. It takes a lot of courage to step up on the mic, whether you're doing it in person or you're doing it via Zoom. It takes a lot of courage to share your inner feelings and your inner thoughts, wondering whether people are going to accept it or understand what you're writing about. It really doesn't matter whether they understand it. For me, it's an invitation for you to share poetry, words, prose, whatever it is, are meant to be shared. And when we share our stories, our experiences, we tend to hear other people. Or I hear my own story and other people's stories, so, uh, particularly when Richard and I are talking, you know, sometimes, <clears throat> you know, listening to Gustav. Uh, I'll hear my experiences in, in some of your poetry. May not agree with it, but doesn't matter. So anyway, we're ready to go. Let's have an amazing show. Let's just vibe. Let's pretend we're back in the 60s and we're just floating on that energy of love. It's not just about love, but right now we're going to flow in love and we're going to embrace each other and remember why we are human. The mere fact that we're breathing the same air right now means we are connected. 
So having said that, it is my honor to introduce this young man. He calls me sometimes, well, I have other friends that call me Black Gandalf. Look at him, doesn't he look like Gandalf? Today, the Inspired Poetry Corner has the pleasure of featuring Richard. I'm gonna read his, I'll try to read all of his bio, Richard Spacek. Richard is a multimedia information sculpture, sometimes producing in polished high gloss words and other times photons and pixels and even composing in wood, cardboard or stone. So he's just an artist. He says he's on leave visiting earth from an alternative future. That he's a writer of not just poetry of sci-fi comedy. He's written a sci-fi comedy called The Martian Ambassador and the Captured Chorus. One, uh, 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 He's recently published two short stories collection, uh, Two Small Windows, a collection of futurist uh, short fables entitled Between the Silence and a, vo a volume of poetry, 7370, Allen Dry, published in 2021. He's also the producer, one of the producers of Poets of the East. I know a number of us have been fortunate to, to spend time with Richard on, on Poets of the East. And I've had the, the tremendous pleasure of being invited by him when he does his uh, Shakespearean series, where he invites poets and other artists to come and dissect a poem. And I say dissect because I don't know if we did Shakespeare any justice when we did Julius Caesar, but it was so much fun to read various parts and just listen to other people's interpretation. I said earlier, he's a friend, he's a brother. Richard and I, I enjoy our conversations, although it's not as often as I would like because we're both busy, but we have great conversations. I think sometimes ideologically we differ, but I think overall we have a common vision that we believe in our humanity. We still believe in the goodness of people and this is why I think we fight and this is why I believe this is what still drives him, that he still hopefully before his last breath can see humans coming together and truly embracing the strength and power that lies within our humanity, that lies within ourselves. He is a brother. I love this man. I love the way he thinks. I love the way he sees the world. And then he pours it into his artistry. So it gives me great pleasure, great, great pleasure to introduce my friend, my brother, and the feature of this month, Richard. Thank you so much, Raul. Uh, you know how I feel about you. This man is such such a great heart. Uh, I I can't say enough. Uh, he is his wisdom shines on all of us, and we can all benefit from it. Um, I I also want to thank each of you poets uh, who've come. I view you as the ancients used to say, "You are all my teachers. You are all my brothers and my sisters." And if I have any wisdom at all. It's when I listen to you. So I, I dare <laughs> to share a few of my thoughts with you, hoping that there might be a little humor, a little insight that comes along with them. But I thank you for all the good you do me. And that's one of the reasons I value these experiences so much. To spend time with minds and hearts like yours enriches me. My wallet may be thin, but I am great in that so many fine people have shared their insights, their hearts with me. Uh, the gift of a poet is so rich. There is no philanthropy like it. And I appreciate you. So with that, let me share my screen. I want to show you some of my artwork real quick while I tell you a story. The one thing I will tell you Okay, come on now. You rascal. Come on now, be a slideshow. <laughs> well, I guess it's not going to be a slideshow, so we'll just flip through them. Uh, I, I like to style some of what I do as the Alien Arbitration Association, because I think we're really all from deep, deep outer space, and that we can come together and have some commonality of interest of spirit uh, that's a really good thing. 
So I'm going to start with that. This is a self-portrait I did many, many, many years ago. Uh, here is a, uh, well, you're not going to cooperate, huh? All right, well, then the heck with that. I'll go ahead and stop that, and I will tell you this story. I had the great, uh, wonderful experience. When I was very young, I was ill a lot. I had trouble breathing. So of my first, second, and third year, I spent a lot of time in the hospital in an oxygen tent. Back then, when you had trouble breathing, they put you in a plastic bag, a great big plastic bag, a plastic, they called them a... Um, oxygen tent. And like any child who was separated from my family, separated from my friends, my toys, my books, I was very feeling very sorry for myself. So here I am, picture this two or three year old sitting in a, in a hospital room by himself in this envelope, this oxygen tent. Sad, so sad, so feeling so sorry for myself. And I, I can still see that that picture. But something really amazing happened. I had a lesson, I tell you, my friends, that has stayed with me my whole life. They wheeled another child into my room. This child was a little girl. She was very upset. She was howling. She was screaming. She was t crying. Her heart was breaking. She felt so bad. She felt worse than I did. And when they left her in the room, her crib, and I'd never seen anything like this. Her crib had bars, not just on the sides, but over the top too, to keep her from climbing out. And I saw this young thing crying, crying her heart out. And I started to talk to her. I started to sing to her. And after a bit, she calmed down and I got her to smile and laugh. And I learned something that to me was vital because I learned that if I can help somebody else feel a little better, that makes me feel better too. And over the years, that, <laughs> that has been my guiding star. No matter how bad I felt about myself, about the world, about conditions, I thought, you know, if I can make one person feel a little better, then that's a good thing. That is a very, very good thing. And uh, so I'm going to read some poetry for you. Uh, these uh, these poems, uh, my goal as a writer has always been really single. I, I've known it for a long, long time. I was the kid who, when he was eight, had a tape recorder, and I used to go around and interview people. So that the fact that I'm in my seventh decade of life on this planet, and I go around interviewing people, really doesn't seem to be odd at all to me. It's something that I really enjoy. I enjoy people. I think that people are just so amazing and so rich and so beautifully different. You know, we all have the same needs. That's absolutely true. But at the same time, our minds, our perspective, our experiences are so different and we have so much to learn from each other. So here we go. This is called a behaviorist perspective, the causes of racism. The troop or group, the clan's glad hand, the sign of nine, the grip in the dark informs the stable state of norms. Remembering the frames of membrane games, brain disguises, shade your eyes in apple pies. It sizes the territory, the turf. Well, the good should. Our side of town, our group is right in the sight of good God's smile, even sunlight reviles your kind outside the pure to lure with your kind's lazy stupid stunts a sparrow of a different hue could be torn and cloven too by a few of another blue hunt the strength bounding bonding unicellular life in multicellular strife responding besiding ties the atom so tight minute molecular might and chooses in precise measure who you'll sleep with tonight. Beehives survive by tribe's trance. It excludes the rude outsider, protects the provider, determines the rider of the queen's desire, embolden invaders, 
reduce the chance for the tribe to advance. Social groups and bamboo shoots, baboon troops and fishy schools know who the foe is, when to go, who's the friend, where's the end. The rules used, training fools by Gene and Team Wish. That's culture's dish. Keeps the Portuguese man of war banging on the door. It explains to the colony who to hang on to and why. Cultural clash, like red ants and black as a reason to attack, is a common step to keep them happy. The good guys and bad. But isn't it sad how often the support of social ties, the tools of molecular rules, can conceal the lack and leak of the social contract to the greater stack? The organs of your hand would be foolish to war or inflict harm on the arm. Could the leg force the knee to submit or flee? Could the brow to the forehead say, drop dead, be gone, amscreen, and then in confusion sway, against the neighbor's array, as this is to make a fist to relate the cultural trait, a boundary in this or any country, say Humpty Dumpty. He's really something to relate to the ground with a loud cracking sound. Unicellular or multicellular, in clothing and in motion, you're expressing the notion of your tribe. It doesn't hide, shouldn't try. But membranes even say, if you lean over easy this way, Together is stronger, lives happier longer. Cultural rifts needn't cause tiffs or express fists in pain, what it is when they mean the support of us. They needn't bleed trust or force us to must the membrane's edgy thrust. But if you say it must, symbiosis is being, osmosis, it's meaning. Surely you know this. There's no relief in grief. Let tribal libel cease. Extend the grace of space. The use of social bonding to unite is great. But even edges meet and act to attract the surging urge to merge. Behavior's perspective. Thanks, babe. Now, um, I can tell you, uh, I grew up in a town where uh, when people agitated for a fair fair wage, they were shot in the street by the mill owners. Um, I grew up thinking about how hard it was for a working person. Uh, when I heard John Lennon sing a working class hero is something to be, I know what side I was on. I'm on the side of the working people. And of course, working artists have it even easier. <laughs> but um, that's another story. But I will tell you this, despite the fact that I'm a card carrying progressive, not just liberal, not just Democrat. No, 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 no. I believe in the people. I believe, like Dr. King, that the, the, the thread, that the line, that the tree of justice grows. It may grow slowly, but it bends towards progress. And whenever I worry about the state of things, I remember my history. And I remember when it was a king or a pope or a chieftain who we couldn't do anything unless they blessed what we did. And we've made progress. I remember when people were bought and sold. My, my heritage is Slavs. You know what that means, okay? <laughs> the, the emperor owned us, you know, just like people were owned. You know, we're making progress. It may be slow and good God, there are setbacks and certainly equal justice under law is not quite here yet but we're making progress. I think of, when I think of the insurmountable, I think of the plant whose little tiny roots broke the rock. And that, that gives me hope. Okay, but all that being said, I wanted to share this other thought I had with me, with you. And, and in it, I try to compare and contrast conservative and liberal, because you know, there's all this, you know, falderall and anger and stuff. Conservatives and liberals, conservative and liberal, they're all against each other. Oh my God, what is the, you know what? Let's set that aside for a second. And I'd like you to consider this with me. This is called the conservative and liberal mind. The division between what conservative and liberal find is only as wide as their narrowest mind and never so deep so as to keep at bay the warrior's hand, the diplomat's play, these both, it seems, can hold quite dear. 
a mother's love, a baby's tear, yet differ so on the country steer. They both cherish and hope and hold to the breast a youngster's hope, an elder's rest, yet with party and polity so contest. The cherished dream, the path so grand, will part these friends, confound the trends that each would nurture shared goals, split ends. Yet each holds his party dear to his heart, and yet seems so to differ just in the art. Who governs best would govern least, and nourish health and wealth concede that both despair of the moderate stare, whose great gray mumblings wander and seem not to care, unabashed, almost unaware. While quite glorious and passionate, we play our part with our honor high and our rhetoric smart, jousting up another hill with a will, all toward the party's coffers thrilled with pennies, we'll build a wall apart with the threadbare honor in the lawyer art, each with his plan, each with his hope, in party thick and misanthrope, mutters and marks and passing throng, who seem not to notice, not to belong to the party, the team, the banner, the cure, no pledges they're signing, no pamphlets allure. Conservatives and liberals, fine, they're only do as divergent as the narrowest mind. They both cherish freedom, both really care. One says laissez-faire, one says c'est la vie, a mere mortal matter of vows, pretentious difference of cadence. They flail it on we. Viva la de France, I'm one to say. They've both been to barter for bread, same as me. One cherishes liberty, just like the other. They both warm to the fire, smile to the lover. While judges may judge and legislators wrangle, they both stroke their spaniel and brush their daughter's tangle. What do I hope to contend with this verse? That neither are wiser, both heir to the curse, of time weighing heavy, the slipping hands hardly slays, while we all light our candle and aim toward the day. Conservatives and liberals. This one, uh, <clears throat> a friend of mine said, you know, Rick, you write a lot of sarcastic, cynical stuff. And I had to agree, I, I do. I, I, I enjoy my satire, I enjoy my cynicism, take it out for a walk pretty regular. They said, you know, but you're, you're such a good writer, you should write something really positive. And I had just been listening to B.B. King, and he had said, the thrill is gone. You know, the thrill, the thrill, the thrill is gone. And I said, you know, he, he's got a point there. So I wrote this, you, you may see the reference, non-disposable world. Picture it, a world without thermonuclear overkill. Bomb lost its thrill? It will, it will. Picture it, a world after all the bombs are gone. To Farman, bomb lost its thrill, it will, it will. Picture it, a world not holding its breath at the edge of death the toxic waste, the chemical taste of food, in money only good. Bomb lost its thrill, it will, it will. Picture it. No mad generals with pointing digit poised, ears pinned, filled with noise of shouts of doubts. Bomb lost its thrill, it will, it will. Picture it. A world after the end of biological weapons, that fools would send, threaten. Bomb lost its thrill, it will, it will. Picture it, no ray guns in space, no thistly, whistly missiles to bless the stratosphere torn or hot heads wind down, burn after space war. Or after thought, it had meant quite a lot. Picture it, the bomb's gone, the missile, dismissal. The sub, decommission, no reactors out fishing. Picture it, the control board turned off. Did I hear a scoff? Bomb lost its thrill, it will, it will. Okay, 
Yeah, um, having having set out my bona fides as being pro-environment and apolitical, let's get political here. Let's speak up for humanity. Okay, that's that's better said. This is a piece. You know, we we can all we can all count too many murders, too many cops, casual shooting to kill. And then there's the people that just do it for fun. May they learn. May they learn. This is a tribute to a gentleman named Ahmad. This is called Tap, Tap, Tap for Ahmad. My feet, the roadway slap. With spring, the joyous running brings. The knees, the ankle freeze, tap, tap, tap. The roadway away does lap, tap, tap, tap. I have my course, down the road I force. Each step adept I take, past trees and trucks I make. Tap, 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 down the roadway shining slap. Away the noises trap, the car that jars the snaps. Tap, 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 the legs and ankles rankle snap. The way the momentum traps, tap, tap. Tap, the breeze, the trees, the calling bird, the winged flap. Tap, 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 leave job and slob and grasp, freeing, fleeing, hope, suppose. Tap, 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 the minutes, miles disclose. Tap, 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 the stiller, tiller, jars, the wounding, static mars. Tap, 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 past lawns and sprinklers spun and construction and all when worn. Tap, tap, tap. Hear wind and water wills at lawns and fawns and thrills at children at their play at the closing of the day. Tap, tap, tap. My feet absorb the shock when only others talk. Just stare and gawk. Tap, tap, tap. My evening passion plot. Tonight I'll visit Mabel and around the table squeak and squawk. Blam! Blam! Goddamn. Tap, tap. Tap for Ahmad. Uh, now, my friends, we all share a world that an awful lot of people seem totally prepared to poison. I, I don't understand it myself. I know that you people and me people have a little more respect for the earth than that. And uh, I'm going to tell you a story about a giant landfill down in Miami. Uh, you know, landfills, we've all seen them. We've smelled them. Uh, sometimes people say, oh, like, we'll just spray some, some disinfectant, a little bit of perfume, and we can forget all about it. It's okay. It just smells bad. No, my friends, there's, there's more to it than that. But I want you to hear a little bit about this. This is called Up on Garbage Mountain. Up on Garbage Mountain, along the Biscayne Bay, although the seagulls stop for dinner, they seldom fly away. Twould seem a foul idea to build it up so high. It's not too wise to leave out all that garbage piling higher, faster, wide, mountainous high, strenuous glazes, heat hassle, hazes, layers, strumming, summing, suns, drumming, heating, Stuff surprise. Trucks take dumps on hasty humps, leak, laughing, pungent, snare, vapors drifting, wafting, lifting, sifting in the air, waves welling, falling, smelling up the air. Don't rush right up or drink the cup without a sealed tight mask to wear. We don our yellow gloves there, our acid tested boots, completely airtight overalls and air conditioned suits with special pressure, steel-toed boots amid the gushing whoosh. The bugs are mighty strange there. We've quite a special strain. The chemicals they've hatched in resemble acid rain. They carry mighty virus, sure, a highly aggressive brood. So do not park your car nearby. They've acquired a taste for tires. Radials are good. The roaches that survive there have carborundum shells, and when they fly from place to place, falling, sparking trails are traced. The mud that moves, we call it, 
watching some crawl by. Don't get any on your shoe. It'll eat right through you quick. And should you dare to poke it, it'll probably eat your stick. One thing you'll find amazing as it reaches cloud-rimmed Olympic heights, one thing true that it can do, bring into a tourist well-earned view, a strange and bloated large, a jersey and a garbage barb, ripe as homeless and as sad a sight as a garbage truck out of luck and gas with a year's young load of your own waste. Like the taste? Up on Garbage Mountain. You know, among the many silly things that people argue about and throw each other uh, intellectual curves about is religion. And it's ironic to me because, you know, the word religion really means binding together. And isn't it ironic that this binding together seems to confuse some people? They insist that they want to share their particular version. But... Um, this was from an interesting event that happened. I was a part of a peace coalition uh, opposing the Iraq war. And uh, it was wonderful. These groups, wide divergent groups came together and it was mostly really marvelous. But from time to time, our Jewish friends and our Palestinian friends would be uncomfortable with each other. And it finally came to a point where it was almost at blows. And I said, hey, tell you what, let me let me host a separate meeting. Let's let's come together. Let's talk, and maybe if we talk it out, we can then avoid the hassle with the with the whole group, because we had a large a large coalition, and so we did. We had this meeting, and I asked people only one request. I said, please come, be prepared to do two things. Number one, listen twice as much as you talk. That's one, and then number two, give your opponent the respect that that you would like to have so if you give that respect and you listen that well we'll have no problem and you know what we had a marvelous meeting it went swimmingly everybody got along it was great the palestinians the jews folks everybody got along it was fantastic and as we're walking out a young man happened to be an arab turned to me and said so i guess obviously you're a jew right and i'm Gosh, that that was not quite the takeaway that I that I hoped you could get, but I wrote this because it it was a puzzlement to me. This is called Are you a Jew? I'm a Jew. I'm a Buddhist. I'm a pagan, and what's truest, I'm a Christian and an animist, and sometimes a philatelist, a Tibetan and a Hindu, and no matter what you do, I think I like what you do. God, I think she's very open-minded. I'm reminded when St. Jones at stake, I'm calling Blake. And when Luther calls, I'm an Eskimo too. I think that's the least I can do. And I'll wear a ghost shirt to my baptism when Martin causes a schism. I'm a Muslim and a Druid. My position is rather fluid. I'm a Sikh and a Taoist, and of that I think I'm proudest, a capitalist and a pinko, or at least sometimes I think so. Sometimes I'm agnostic, a Rastafarian Coptic, a Methodist contrarian, or even a librarian, a sectarian Siberian who often turns to Mecca while counting on Kabbalah to get him to Shambhala, a Catholic Baptist evangelist, a Dunker agrarian fundamentalist, a seven-day adventurist, juggling snakes with the Lady of the Lakes, a Mormon or a Jainist, a diurnal obsidian Darwinian, an intelligent designer, a cosmological redefiner. When praying aloud at Delphi, a Mithraic tantric yogi, a Jasmine playing boogie. A close insight to God, or at least that's what we thought, a confusion and a Shinto, it seems that's what I'm into, a Calvinist, a Navajo with a nodding wink to Zanadu, a Cherokee, a Swabian, Swinburgian, Zoroastrian, Hussite, a Theosophist and a Thelemite, spilling celestial dynamite, stealing from the rich gods, giving to the poor gods from an empty plate of freighted fate. <laughs> and if, if I have a little... If I have a couple more minutes, I'm going to 
threaten you with some science, having just dealt with religion. I'm not hearing you, Raul. You can have more than a couple of minutes, my brother. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. This, my friends, now we all have seen dinosaurs, right? We've seen the big ones and the small ones. We've seen the meat eaters and the plant eaters, and we know them all very well, many of us. And I want you to picture a brontosaurus right now, okay? Big, long, heavy, vegetarian dinosaur, long tail, long neck. Okay, and guess what? Forget about it. The scientists have recently discovered that there ain't no such thing as a brontosaurus. They've said that what we've been calling a brontosaurus is actually uh, just a teenage diplodocus, okay? And I was started thinking about that, and I thought, you know, I mean, it's one thing to be extinct. We've sort of come to terms with being extinct, right? But, but to even have extinction robbed? Oh, my God! Now, that's, that's a dirty deal. Okay, so I, I wrote this to my friend, the brontosaurus, okay? This is called the Bronto I Never Saurus. Oh, Bronto, so sorry, Saurus, not once, but twice removed from us, not relinquished to museum rust, not languished piano weary neath the veil of dust, must while away the hours you trust, for far away from us you twice. It isn't really very. Not only do you no longer live, not now, in even that slim aware must give no live. Because they said you never did, not even once did breathing live. Deuce dancing life, not ever child, not ever wife, reclaimed once it seemed from ancient mire, now so short in hours retire. Twitch tossed, great long tailed beast, 500 tons, weaving through our imagination, your lumberings come. We thought you dumb. We saw you 10 elephants long. We never thought you hadn't come. To a said, twixt head and tail, a bristly bundle of fibrous fun, you drove two brains instead of one. You cheated death. You cheated grave. You never even really came. A mis-ID deed they now are known. Heard from scientific newscast crowing now, they know now seem saying, those in whose minds you once seem playing, 200 tons, a slowly moving mountain of mistake. You didn't nuzzle the reeds at the lake. You didn't puzzle the volcanic passion. You didn't puzzle and stumble through the marshy morning while midst munching grasses, muffle yawning. You didn't hug the sunlight's strength. You never stretched your tail its length. If you live lusty longer in the mind of those to whom the thought of Bronto comes, small pleasure, this, then take it comes. You're honored here, if ever future number, ancient fossils done. The Bronto I never saw. Now, you know, you can't be a poet in the, uh, in the, epic cycle of COVID without at least throwing one there to the, to the little virus that was. And I wrote this, it's called Down From The Trees. And I bet many of you can, can relate to this. Down From The Trees. Oh, honey, baby, tell me please, since we're not so long down from the trees, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Up in the branches or down on deeply polished floors, we like reciprocal, you and me. Ever since we balanced on the limbs of trees, whether out in the car or up in the tree, I'll groom you and you groom me. The only thing now that's left for us when the virus sets a fence between what we really feel and what we really mean, with you so far away on the other side of the glowing screen, another day. We wave weekly. How I miss your sweet perfume and the many ways, darling, you decorate a room. The distance mars, our love sealed up behind the screen's glass walls, untouched. Oh, honey, baby, tell me, please, since we're really not that long down from the trees, I wish you were here to find and pluck off all my fleas. We're isolated, out of touch, miles away, my fingers clutch. In disarray, my clothes askew. Oh, what I wouldn't give for you to have your seat beside me here with your fingers searching my matted hair. 
<laughs> even to have you look with scorn at the clothes piled across the room I have worn. I'd even eat the toast you burn if I could beside you, touch you, and warmly turn. Well, I will offer you an encore, even though it wasn't requested. <laughs> and, hold on, uh, hold on. Encore, encore. <laughs> Come on, you know, I happen to have something right here. Uh, this is, ah, this is one of my current favorites. Now, many of you, I know, have, have puzzled at, at the curious set of values that our societies use to guide. And and one of the things that I, I, I share with you, that this has puzzled me too, but I, I have a solution, my friends. It says, let's send the rich into space, okay? Let's send the rich into space. They know their place high above the common trace. Let's send the rich into space. We'll spare them gladly. So far from our face jeering madly, they've made their case. Let's send the rich into space. Let's send the rich into space. Let them make their own fresh air. They'll have to make it. I don't care. No use to fake it. Losing the rich won't make us sad, mad, or even glad, but it does scratch an itch. Because all they have, they stole, shaken and taken, their bulging pockets breaking, scraped from the plates of our beloved poor, huddled, shivering outside their iron-hearted door. Don't let the door from behind hit you. I don't mind if that tiny door fits you. You won't have to share one drop of space. There's a lie. Plenty of vacuum out there to spare. Let's send the rich out into space. I swear. You may keep your spoils and your buds the royals. Just so you're all amused, let me leave you these crumbs of clues. It seems you might have to polish your own muddy, bloody shoes. About time you paid your dues. No longer will they walk among us. Send them out in the stars just far from us. They can take their yachts and their cars way out to the stars. Bless, <laughs> let's send the ridge into space, that place. Bless their darling arses. Let them dodge and duck as each meteor passes. Let them take their own poodle out for a willy wear. Ooh, solar flare, whoops, silly. And the next spinning, grinning asteroid till he needs to build his lunch or the spaceship goes crunch, let's send the rich into space. They can take all their sneering, their complacent careering, their vain glorious poses, and stick it right up their surgeon trim noses. They're just too good to tarry here. Why, my friend, it's to us the earth and its clear waters, dear. Take your servants if they're willing. No need to be waited upon and get their fill in. As if you're a sage or some new age villain, let's send the rich out into space. I'll chase. Let's spend their lives without their humble shutters drawn, their royal progeny entitled classes at the school they built and spawned, where each dawn of the royal clan skates right through across the gold-plated span. Then every man a king, every woman a queen, and not one more knee shall bow, nor wait in distress ere now, or any scene of their mess, just send a rich into space, I guess. Let's send a rich into space. <clears throat> well, I hope you, I hope I brought you some thinking and some laughter. That's my goal. Uh, let's unmute, guys. Let's unmute. Uh, uh, right on, Rick. Yeah. That was just brilliant. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. It, 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 it. Just when I thought I heard a favorite, another one came. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, I'm so glad, and I look forward to hearing your work, which will be as brilliant and as thought-provoking. I am so pleased to be enriched by your work. Thank you, my friends. And thank you, Brother Raul, as always, my brother. Oh, the honor is mine, my friend. I'm not done with you yet, but uh, the earth, the, <clears throat> sorry, what was that line? The, the surging urge to merge? Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, and then uh, cultural rifts need not come cause tiff. Cause tiffs. Tiffs. Yeah. tiffs. 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 
good old word like vex we don't use as often anymore right yeah, but, no. um, but to me, to me <laughs> but to me those two lines uh, of, from those poems you know really kind of summarize who you are um and I, I love the poem you did you know liberal conservative republican Dep yeah, that's what i love about you and i I think there's many things we have in common. We see similar, and then there's obviously some things we differ, but yet I love the fact that you try to find balance in your poetry. And even if you oppose, you have opposing views, you still try to include it to offer a sense of balance. And I, I just think that's brilliant. And, you know, maybe to me, that's the philosophy in you. That's what it draws me to you. I just, yeah. Um, it's not just whimsical. It's not just rhymy. It, it's deep. The imagery. Like you, you're a sculptor of words, and 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 I I think you're like me in that sense. You're just putting it out there to to hopefully invite people to look at things differently and to invoke in conversation. So that was a brilliant set, Richard. Thank you, my friend. Thank, Thank you, you so much. So much for honoring us this morning and sharing the insight. Getting a uh, you know getting a smaller glimpse of of the man inside, not just the the beautiful young boorish image that you have, but you know the depth of many lives lived and the wisdom that now flows through your words as an invitation for us to to you know to look within and and to find our own courage to share and speak our truth. So I applaud you for that. So <clears throat> for those of you that, that know the, uh, the Inspired Poetry Corner Recital, the feature does their thing. And then we get to ask the feature a few questions. And, you know, I'll start off with a serious one, because to me, you're, you're more than just a poet um, and a scientist. But, you know, you're a storyteller. So in, in light of the, the discomfort that we see in the world today, you know, what role do you see storytelling play in our present day in, in trying to hopefully shift as well, I, I, I have uh, learned um, from my, my brothers and sisters uh, of indigenous wisdom, there's a, there's a wonderful Cherokee saying that says, uh, who writes the story defines history. And I think that's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. And I take it as the responsibility of every one of us here, when we talk to the people in our orbit, that we help them understand uh, a, a deeper sense of what's going on, not to be not to be carried away on the whim of the moment, not to not to buy the latest propagandist who's the next one whispering in the king's ear, but instead to keep our eyes on that that wisdom that we know that makes us human mm -hmm. and that gives us the empathy. Young lady was speaking of empathy earlier. I agree completely. Mm -hmm. If we forget that we are all one people then we're going to make mistakes. And as long as we hone to that, that remembrance that we are all one family, we, we all depend on each other. And uh, that's, that's what keeps me going. I, uh, <laughs> like many of us, you know, we've been in this thing for a long time. We're like, didn't we fight that battle already? Didn't we already, you know, that was, <laughs> we solved that, you know, that was 30 years ago or 50 yeah, years yeah. ago. <laughs> but, um, we we have these challenges and we must continue. And uh, I, I mentioned the metaphor of the plant through the rock. I, I, I really see that, you know, uh, whenever I lose faith for a moment, I have that blink, you know, and I'm just, just being a poor human being. And I go, oh my God, the, the, you know, what we're yeah, faced yeah, with yeah. is insurmountable. But I, I think we faced worse. We faced worse and won and survived. And I believe that you good people, you are telling that story. You are reminding people of our common humanity. And that that gives me so much hope. Oh, well said, well said. So as a, a wordsmith, do you have a favorite word? What's your favorite word? Indefatigable. Okay. Indefatigable. Okay. I came across that word when I was a really young kid and I thought, oh my God, that really, I mean, that really says it, you know? It, one word, indefatigable. I will not be stopped. Mm. And I think that's humanity. I think that's that that root from the plant who goes, I'm going through that rock. I don't care. I am going through that rock and does. <clears throat> yeah. Great word. Great word. And I think sometimes we forget the resiliency of our humanity. 
right? That's why I said, I, you know, I have history to look at the fact that how we keep evolving, we keep evolving. Some people argue, well, we're not evolving. Yeah, we are. We're moving forward. That's what evolution is, is about moving forward. We're constantly moving forward. We don't always like how we move forward, right? But Sometimes then, it's awful slow. Yeah. I, I, I would I, admit from time to time to say we are awfully slow learners. Off, yeah. Awfully slow. We learners. are. And then sometimes the harshness of the moment over time actually yields so much more positive that we don't always want to look at because we're still stuck in, in what happened. So, but ultimately it doesn't matter. I agree with you because we're constantly moving forward. So that's a really good word. I, I don't think I've ever heard that word. So thank you. What turns you off? somebody taking joy in causing pain mm. whether it's emotional or physical i think there's nothing uglier there is nothing uglier in life than that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i agree yeah especially when they do it against uh, for me children children and animals but us you know um you know one of the reasons I, I don't necessarily jump on on the climate change bandwagon is only because I'm not surprised the way we treat the planet. Look how we, if the, the way we treat the planet is a reflection of how we treat ourselves, how we treat each other. Yeah. We treat it, if we treat each other better and more humanely overall, the planet will benefit from it. So, so I, I, I agree with you. Thank you for that. Um, do you accept the title poet? What does that mean? I relish, I relish it, sir. Mm -hmm. To me, the role of a poet, I mean, think of it, the most ancient stories we have from any culture is, is their poets. You know, I, I first met Homer as a poet. I, I had an English translation of his work in, in poetic lines, and I was just so touched and so moved. I said, my God, you know, what a noble path to be a poet. And of course, you know, I know all of us here probably became poets for the money uh, and, and the glory, but um, <laughs> yeah, I, we're poets because we don't have a choice, you know? I mean, they're like, I got to put lines down, you know? Sometimes they rhyme, sometimes they don't, that's okay. And then, you know, for those people who, who, who really, you know, who, who have that fever, say, I want to share this. I, I want to, I want to share that insight because I think someone else can benefit from this too. Right. And uh, I, I'm going to be an overnight sensation. I'm, I'm prepared. <laughs> uh, you should have been here earlier when Neymar and I were talking about, yeah, we're not going to get rich off our poetry. So maybe when we're dead, but um, I was just going through the chat and Henry uh, mentioned, I think he meant mainly the greedy rich who see people as disposable products. Not all rich people think that way, but some exist. Let's ask Rick. Uh, Rick. Is that what you kind of... Gucci, if the Gucci fits, you know. The Gucci fits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because not all rich people think that way. But yeah. un sometimes it seems, unfortunately, many do. Right? I mean, I, I don't know. I spent years in the corporate world. And the higher up the ladder you, you, you climb, the more sometimes you have to ignore the good things that you know you should be doing in order to achieve, to make, you know, so it's a choice, but, you know, but at the end of the day, I think when you, when you, you have to step on a lot of toes to, to, to get to that point. And I don't, I don't know how you don't do that. This is why, again, maybe it's time to look at a new system that involves all. So. Good question, uh, Henry, or good observation. Thank you so much. Let's get uh, a couple of more and then we'll wrap this up. What's your favorite sound? Laughter. 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 Yeah. You know, there's there are so many different flavors of laughter. You know, there's the laughter of, of two loving people uh, at, at, at the end joke, and it needn't be from words. It's just a look, you know, the thought. Um, there's a laughter of people. Um, you know, I, I guess I can qualify that and say laughter that it's not coming from pain, you know, laughter that comes from joy. Mm -hmm. But laughter, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, there's nothing, nothing sweeter than that. And of course, the sweetest of all is the laughter of children. That's just, oh my God. Yeah. That's yeah. stuff, man. 
I sit here, you know, I live at my, my sister's basement and I, I sit here and I listen to when the family's upstairs and especially my, my youngest niece get it did his belly ache and laugh. You just sit here and it just it just permeates throughout the whole space. So I get it, I get it. Um is there a sound, least favorite sound? Uh, yeah, yeah, a bulldozer tearing up a forest. Mm. that's a really sad sound yeah i've i've seen it uh i've read about it um there there was a poignant uh series in an environmental journal of literally a bulldozer tearing down one of the last remaining forests in borneo and and the orangutans gathered round this thing and and were shouting at him to stop doing this so so horrendously horrendously sad yeah and i'm not going to ask you the profession question because man you've done so many different things uh you know in your life but we don't have time for that yeah but i'll i'll, I'll end this by the question i last question i always ask everyone if heaven does exist what would you like to hear god say when you arrive at the pearly gates i'm in heaven right now and i'm looking forward to the next poet read because <laughs> that's the voice of god ah uh, you don't ever surprise me well done well said well said, well said we are living heaven and hell aren't we we're in it we're in it we're some of us some, some of us true enough some of us exactly <laughs> i have to thank you for <laughs> thank you for the, the correction some of us you're very right um it's always a pleasure to 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 listen not just to your poetry but to engage with you and and to to share to share pixels and electrons with you. Hopefully, one day we'll be we able to meet in the flesh. But you know, I, I I you know I've enjoyed I I enjoy doing this on a monthly basis and and I enjoy the people that agree to be features. You know, it's not like we're paying anyone and you know it's not like we're making money from this. But the mere fact that we get together and we get to share. And we get to highlight people that we respect and, and give them, you know, a little bit more time to share more than, you know, two or three poems, but the more to get to your insight. So I'm, I'm just so honored that 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 you you chose to be here today and to share the way that you know you always share. And to me, your your, your words, the imagery, the metaphors, the, the, the rhyme, everything is always an invitation for us to look within before we start looking out that's what I, one of the key messages i take away from you uh, so you know uh, you know just like our friend lantern as well the, the way they write and and many other poets so i'm just so grateful everyone unmute if you're still unmuted please and and, and give richard some big love look at that flowing silver here with the brick a man of wisdom just right, constantly blessing our lives and and showing us you know there's this this there's other ways to engage and other ways to, to to really listen to each other to empathetic and empathetic heart. So thank you for that reminder. Thank you so much. I'm so honored and blessed. Thank you, brother. You're we most sure of how to be alive, which is really what we want. You know, we're probably walking around, some of us uh, able to see it still blind, alive, but dead. And so Rick is showing us how to be alive, yeah. like a vibrant flow of water. That's well said, Lantern. And it, it, it's it's a beautiful mind. It's a beautiful heart, right? Indeed. So, um, you know, and like attracts light. So, just the fact that we're brothers and friends, maybe there's a small piece of me that knows that light and knows that heart. So, just because of knowing you, so I appreciate that. Absolutely. All right, guys. This is how we roll at the Inspired Poetry Corner, and um, we have uh, one more feature coming up in December and that uh, you just heard his voice our lantern carrier is going to be our feature for December <laughs> to wrap up the year of an uh, of this recital so let's continue on with the not ready for po oh before I start with the calling the list of poets that are here to support Richard I mean we're all here to support but the ones that are going to be sharing their voice uh I had sent invites uh not invites I private message some of you through the zoom here if anyone wants uh to recite let me know um i am going to try and keep this short this show a little shorter and concise today 
because uh, the last one was very long. So I, I made a promise to myself, let's keep it shorter. But I also like to try to honor those that show up. So if you're not on the list and you may want to recite a piece, just let me know and I'll try to squeeze you in. Um, also, just to let you know, we've had a, a, a couple of people. Um, uh, Richard, our friend Marianne, sends her regards. She was having issues with her laptop. Uh, Leah is homesick, so you know they wanted me to pass on uh, their love to you. Uh, that they they wanted to be here, but they couldn't. So, anyway, let's continue on. Um, I had told her she was second because Marianne was going to try to uh, to to be here and, and put her first, but um, uh, obviously that didn't work out. So we continued the tradition where the first poet, wordsmith artist, because she's also more than just a poet, uh, shares her brilliant graphic poetry with us, all the way from not the island of Greece, is my good friend, Alexandra. But, but Greece with the many islands. <laughs> it's a running <laughs> joke now, Alexandra. <laughs> all right, the floor is yours, my friend. Flying 10. My flying is my prayer, my flying is my soul's psalm. Mellifluous prayer, mellifluous flying, striving to synthesize beautiful symphonies. Sometimes in a discordant labyrinth, sometimes in a blissful cadence, sometimes in clashing thunder without solidarity or resonating melody sometimes in harmonic raindrops, like divine notes, quenching our hearts as thirst, connecting, rising, into a new cycle of incarnation. My flying is my ode, my flying is my soul's lyrics, pioneering ode, pioneering flying, pollinating my thoughts with a nectar of imagination sometimes in dignified humility, sometimes in illuminating speech, sometimes in the remaining few upholding their ideas, albeit unprotected and betrayed, sometimes in a united consciousness, bursting into a grid of light, inspiring, rising into a thrilling creation, my flying is my dance, my flying is my soul swirling, orbiting dance, orbiting flying, coalescing, protecting from dark entities, sometimes in merciless defeat, sometimes in rays of jubilation, sometimes in the crashing sea waves, battering and victimizing with mortal selfishness sometimes in the lapping sea waves, smoothing over the roughness, releasing our sweetness, initiating, rising into a rewarding metamorphosis. My flying is my apocalypse, my flying is my soul's ambrosia, deifying apocalypse, deifying flying, freeing, joining my spirit with skies of art, sometimes in expressionless disillusion, sometimes in mystic truth, sometimes in a dark cave, the gravity of darkness weighing us down, sometimes in the golden dawn, the phoenix soaring, never touching ground, outshining, rising, into a rejuvenating catharsis. Our flying is our utopia. Our flying is our heaven on earth. Crystalline utopia, crystalline flying. Thank you. Unmute, guys, unmute. Yeah, Alexandra. Holy, hypnotic, beautiful. So, so good. <laughs> I feel like I have not heard your words in a in a long time, and and I'm just I don't know. I feel like I haven't been done this in a while. I'm just soaking all of this in today. So so good to always hear your your soothing voice, 
seeing the graphics, just just how artistic are, and then how you infuse your poetry into it. it. Yeah, it's it's a it's a beautiful marriage, Alexandria. It's a beautiful marriage of of, of artistic bliss. So, thank you so much for that. Um, for, briefly. I'm yes, um, sitting sitting oh, here next okay. to this beautiful beautiful <laughs> Greek goddess. I she mean, embarrassing. no, I'm uh, it's um it's one thing to watch, you know, remotely, you know, virtually and sitting here next to this lady with this just beautiful energy, it just takes it to another level. Um I was feeling very anxious all day and I just instantly I feel calm and that is no small victory. Amazing. Just amazing. Oh I'm muting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she doesn't take compliments very well. So glad someone else said it. Thank you so much, Alexandra. Okay, let's continue on. Um, up next, we have a young lady that's new to uh, the Inspired Poetry Corner. I've only heard her poetry through one of uh, a couple of her YouTube uh, videos. Um, Karen Scott, some of you know Karen Scott. Uh, buzzed me and said, you really got to listen to this young woman and invite her to the recital. So I, I didn't even listen to her video at the time. I just jumped on and, and invited her because I trust I trust my fellow poets and fellow humans when they recommend someone. Um, so I'm really looking forward to to hearing her. I believe she uh, she's well, she's a young one, young to me because I'm old now. Look at the you can see the gray. Look at Richard and I were old. Uh, but I believe she's in Cleveland. Ohio in the United States and um, from the videos and some of the feedback I've seen she was just brilliant and so this should be a treat for us anyway ladies and gentlemen put your hands together snap it up for a new poet to the inspired poetry uh, corner Raja did I say that correctly yes okay the floor is yours my friend I'm trying to make myself full screen okay uh this poem is called water cycles history repeats itself like water water repeats itself like history we learn in school that water holds on to a distant past that we're drinking the same water from decades or even centuries ago meaning the water raining down on us today is the same water that left all those people without a place to go after katrina the same water in the rivers the Underground Railroad followed to freedom. The same water in the rivers the Negro speaks of. The same water we wash our curls in. The same water we wade in that God troubled. The same water left rusted and indigestible in Flint's pipes. The same water they found Emmett Till floating in. The water in the hoses they sprayed us with is the same water that caught us when we jumped ship and held us tight until nothing hurt anymore, and buried us where no one could find us again. This dirty water, this muddy water, this bloody water, guilty water, filthy water. Water repeats itself like history. History repeats itself like water. We learn in school that history holds on to a distant past, that we're living the same history from decades or even centuries ago, meaning the history coming down on us today is the same history that left all those people without a place to go after Katrina. The same history in the rivers the Underground Railroad followed to freedom. The same history in the river the Negro speaks of the same history we wash our curls in, the same history we wade in that God troubled, the same history left rusted and indigestible in Flint's pipes, the same history we left Emmett Till floating in, the history in the hoses they sprayed us with is the same history that caught us when we jumped ship and held us tight until nothing hurt anymore and buried us where no one could find us again. This dirty history, this muddy history, bloody history, guilty history, filthy history. History repeats itself like water and water repeats itself like history. Thank you. Raja, are you just willing, wanting to share one today or? Whoa, 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 okay. Sorry, I forgot how I turned my video. I could share <laughs> uh, one more short one. Yeah, please do, please do. Um. So this one, um, 
I started writing, well, when I was in college, we went on spring break, um, and then we never went back to campus ever again because of the pandemic. And I was still taking my poetry class and we still had to write a poem every week and it got really annoying. So I just started calling each of my poems crisis writing because I was like, we're in a crisis and crisis writing, right? So this is crisis writing um, number 19. There have been a lot of different theories on how the world is gonna end because of some man-made catastrophe like nukes or climate change or coronavirus, but personally, I don't like the sound of those. I think they're all just a little too cliche. I think if I had to write the end of the world, I would have a curious black child running their thumb across the horizon until they found the edge of a smooth strip of tape. And they'd start scraping at it with their nail until it peeled away. And there'd be nothing holding the sky to the earth anymore. And the world would just peel back like the top of a convertible. No flames, no sickness, nothing nefarious, just everything collapsing into our baby's hands. Thank you. All right, guys, unmute, unmute, please, please uh, give her a warm welcome and a welcome, a big round of applause and appreciation. Wow, Raja. Wow. Blew me away. Wow. Brilliant, uh, full, brilliant, brilliant first recite, uh, reading, um, especially the, that first piece on, on water. I, I just loved how you use water in history. And, mm -hmm. and tied the two to that, you know, and, and I wrote down as you were right as you were reading that what is what a loves <clears throat> what is love for us is just being water. What is job is not to love us. That's our job. Right? That's what I took away from that. That that was well done. Thank you so much. I love how you tied those two together and, and give us a bit of history and, and challenging us to go, hmm. Have we learned from our history or are we still repeating those same patterns? So thank you for that. I really like that perspective that uh, water's job is not to love us. I know, I know one's ever said that to me before. It's very interesting. Yeah. But thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. I've, I've never, I don't think I've heard anyone tie water and history together like that. So, and that, you know, to me, that's the beauty of, of what we do is to be able to share our thoughts and our words, uh, whether it's true poetic flow or not, and and be able to, hmm, I never thought of it that way. I've never looked at it that way before. I mean, that's the beauty. Even if we disagree, you know, I'm sure you can hear something in what someone says that that you can find some sort of a common ground to at least have a conversation. And you're only 22. 24. 24, still. <laughs> you're a baby. <laughs> Not a baby, baby, but well done. Well done. Do you write a lot? Um. Yeah. I guess. I guess so. I've got lots of poems. Okay. Okay. I'll have to reach out and talk to you more, and 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 we'll have to do some stuff in the new year. That that was just brilliant. You're 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 brilliant wordsmith. Oh, thank you. I love the way you. I love the way you perform your words. So thank you so much for that. Thank you for coming, and I, I'll have to reach out to Karen and and thank her again for for sending sending you this way so all right up next we have a new author who is really working the scene of getting putting her book out and uh all the way from london england put your hands together snap it up for neymar neymar where is neymar i know she, i know she's still here Unless she stepped away for a second. Are you still here, Neymar? Because I can always go and come back. 
Uh, let's, if she's probably just stepped away, let's just move on. Scott, are you ready? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. This uh, gentleman is coming, returning for the second time. He, he, he joined us last month and recited. So if we can uh, welcome Scott, and then when Nema comes on, we'll bring her back. Scott, you're up, my friend. I suppose I better show my face, but I look terrible. <laughs> I look awful. Uh, it's your face, my friend. No, you don't. It's your face. <laughs> I'm going to um, I'm going to recite a uh, I'm going to read a actually for change of pace. Did I read a love poem or a political poem last time? Do you remember? I think it was political, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I, I actually want to read I want to read a love poem today because okay. uh, uh, people don't mind. Uh, now you, you can see me, but I can't see you. No, you One. look good. You're fine. You're good. Photograph of Ms. M. McSee, taken 1975. World is art. All poetry, ekphrastic. Photograph, black and white. A young woman, nude. Face leans on arm, resting on arm, of darkly upholstered chair, somewhat worn. Reclined sideways, face mostly visible. Cheekbones rise delicately. Chest perfect cones. Hair dark. Skin delicately pale. Symmetrical elegance belying sensual. Impression always that she is so very, very pretty. Two. Interregnum, if you reached past cloudless morning, moonless night. Three, now, Ms. In these times, ruined doorways, wasted landscapes, mountainous empires, contrived, banal. Betrayal is currency. I remain poor. Missing decades, the unreachable fades into vistas. Since I don't feel like getting into any political arguments today, no arguments. Today. I won't mention any names, but the one per person prominent in the poetry scene was going on and on in a woke way with one other person patting each other on the back about how white men such as myself should recuse themselves from poetry to make room for other people. It used to be when there was something that a community was sharing, people such as myself would strive to make it more and more inclusive and I've done that for marginalized groups, some of whom happened to be black and some of whom weren't. But I tried to pull them in because they were in, in, in groups that were marginalized, um, uh, particularly consumers of the mental health system. And um, it used to be you, you, you open it up. You don't segregate. That's that's where, as, as an as old socialist from way back, I might make a point that that's where some people's Marxism comes in, separate into groups, but that's another issue. But I, did, I will finish this with a very brief poem from decades ago. It's called Censorship for the Esmeralda Crew. If the sky god tells you to be silent in the night, you can say, if you've seen rainbows, you remember the flood and you're going to sing. Hmm. Thank you for that, Scott. Thank you for that reminder. You know, we're going to run into all kinds. Um, I myself personally, I, I, I don't like using words like marginalize. Uh, I'll just speak for myself. 
myself only. I'm not marginalized, I'm not oppressed, and I'm not a minority. And we need to stop thinking that when we need to stop saying those things. So um, I, I understand the world we live in. So, but for me, I don't, I don't check those boxes uh, at well, all, at all. I, so uh, this I, is one of the reasons, one again, uh, you, you're re reinforcing is another vehicle I want to start where we want to have these types of conversations. So, but anyway, I appreciate you sharing. Um, thank you so much for, for, for coming and supporting and supporting us and, and feeling free. Cause I know you've had issues before where you felt you couldn't share and say what you wanted to share. So you are welcome to do so here. We just try to keep it at a minimal. This is why there's another vehicle where we can chop these kind of topics up and really get more deep, more depth that we want. Please so, keep us all posted. Oh, for sure. Trust me, it's coming, it's coming. Just gotta get through the end of the year and you know we got the silly season coming and all these things. So anyway, up next, uh, uh, hopefully Neymar will return. So Henry. L. Jones, my brother, are you there? Are you ready to go? Thank you for showing up and thank you for uh, for asking to recite. The floor is yours. Hey, everyone. I'm glad to be here. Um, I thought I'd be near the end and I had to relocate. That's okay. Yeah. Um, someone saw I was on Zoom but decided to go look at some TV and had it up pretty loud. I said, oh, I, I got to move. Um, so I was slipping through looking for a poem, and uh, this one, though, is right in front of me, and it's a new one, and I'd like to share it with you. It's titled, Man-Child Ready for the Promised Land. New man-child born, released from the folds of heaven, slipped past the flowing rivers, baptized in tears and pain, erupted, but held in the arms of joy. Dangling cord of life cut, now walk on your feet, on the world's diamonds you can't possess. Chase after those shiny dreams and hopes, a systematic lure dangling in your crib, drugs hanging down on you, sex hanging down on you, the American dream hanging down on you, blue beatings hanging down on you, self-hatred hanging down on you, systematic racism hanging down on you to play with my little child. Now smile, toothless angel, as you realize your naked flesh pampered in soft lies of comfort really doesn't prepare, prepare you for all the shit in life or how pissed you'll become as a target naked flesh reveals the marks of shame etched with dull knife cuts deeply. All the words from the country, you know those words and wear them proudly when they call you and remind you to teach this child you ain't worthy. So this makes the newborn scream in terror, torn from the womb's comfort until nothing is heard but silence in the dark. His darkness bathing in a tub of hatred to baptize you from the sins you never did, make you reflect in the mirrored shadow, shallow of yourself, seeking a balm for many cuts made by you or them. That bath tries to soothe your skin for being what is just your skin, which doesn't seem to heal completely. Each wound found is a black hole sucking life into nothingness, making you always feel empty. Even if you found someone to love, it's never enough. Blood or bone to make you believe you're real. If alive and human instead of a, another sacrifice brought to the altar, hoping just to live. Again, sacrifice, again, sacrifice, again and again and again and again and again. How many must be done? A bloody waterfall streaming to the end of the earth where it becomes a crimson constellation seen light years away, thinking this happened thousands of years ago. No, it still happens. As the black hole slurps all the color to reveal a trail leading back to the beginning to maybe show 
where and when the madness began. Then that man child becoming and knowing who you are and not afraid to be in this world pulled from the bleeding cradle, why must this newborn be burdened to decide whether to fight or die instead of simply living? Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Um, I know if you have one up, would you like to share another one? I would love you to do more than just one. And then, Gustav, you're next, my brother. I do enjoy your poetry, Henry, really do. I love, uh, every time I hear you, I feel like I'm getting a history lesson in what was and maybe a reminder of what we are not to do anymore. And then the soulfulness of it. So I'd love to hear another piece. No, Henry, you're muted. You got muted. I don't know why you're muted. I thought I was finished. Uh, this <laughs> poem, th thank you. This is a short, sweet one. This poem was written for an Earth Day event. The coordinator invited um, three of us, uh, three poets, and asked us specifically to bring poems about Earth Day and the Earth and nature and so forth. And I said, hmm, I think I've written one or two like that, but this is one of them. Uh, Mama Terra, raining tears today onto the dried ground to cleanse the trail of filth we spread, covering animals soon to become extinct, a faint memory of them only seen on websites, reaching other people to find words of hope, wondering what to do so many changes too soon. Very powerful. You know, when, when I hear you, I get this image of, 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 a, of, a, of an elder sitting around reading his words and, and young ones, well, people of all sorts sitting around just listening. That's, that's, that's what comes up when I hear your, your poetry. Very powerful stuff, very powerful words, beautiful work, my brother. I, you know, it's only the second time I've heard you, but I really enjoy listening to you. I have to reach out to you and we'll have to do something in the new year because I, I, I love your voice. It's a powerful voice. And like I said, I almost feel like, a, a, you know, it's a reminder of the history that we, we need not relive. Right. Please. Sorry, someone's talking. Go ahead. I was about to say Henry is a griot par excellence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you for, for honoring us today, Henry. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, let's uh, move on. Uh, oops. Um, I thought I just disconnected our recording, but I didn't. Next, I haven't heard this man because I have not been coming into the Zoom rooms. I've, 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 I needed to take a break from, from everything, but uh, I was in love, love listening to his stuff, his passion, the way he, he, he gets into, it's like when Gastoff is reciting a poem, you could feel him in almost every syllable of his words. He just he just pours himself into his performance. So I just love that. Anyway, let his words do the talking. Ladies and gentlemen, snap it up for Gastoff. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. All poets who came before me and all who are coming after me, you're brilliant. Thank you. Uh, when I come to a new space, as this is to me, I tend to bring um, my two best foot forward poems. This is the guy in epiphany. I've just had an epiphany. It's all become clear like cut glass crystal from Tiffany that all of this, all we see, we're an organism, interplanetary. God, we're Gaia, we're chaos born. We're not some womb from which we're torn, but rather we're one single entity, one world of infinite diversity. 
E pluribus unum is one way to put it. And until you see it, your third eye's hooded from the beauty of this revelation, for you must see the implication, sex, race, religion, these are artificial memes. And by dividing, we've conquered our own higher dreams of evolving into the Gaia mind, or you're willfully choosing to be blind, then you devolve to become what you believe outside this hole as you perceive a parasite on this earth, our host. You always hurt what you love the most. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost are patriarchy's highest toast, and monotheism's predicted a disaster. But our destiny, we can master, and our higher minds illuminate that ours is Gaia's fate, and the tree of life you must not kill. Love and do what thou will. As above, so below. Love your mother. Let it grow, 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 let it grow. Thank you. And this piece is called Holographic Universe. One, two, three. Check, check, check. Beamed up from Prague like Star Trek. I got lines going on to infinity. Some call me a poet and some a divinity. But I never take me too seriously. I'm living on the edge deliriously. Future evolution depends on our decisions now. We're surmounting every difficulty. We'll show you how. Words flowing out like Niagara falls in your lap like Viagra to keep that booty shaking as Armageddon's quaking. My rhymes erect, it's never flaccid. Complex like deoxyribose, nucleic acid. I've been up all night, I keep going and going and going. And where this will stop, there's no way of knowing. Leo Dragon's my horoscope. I'm pyrotechnic like a great white dope. I'm on fire and everything's fine. Bunny. I'm the freaking energizer bunny. It's inside me. There's always more. Seven days a week, I'm on 24. Plugged in, blissed out. I'm inspired into cosmic consciousness. I'm hardwired. I'll live forever. I'll die trying. At light speed, I'm time defying. Real serious, like the dog star, yet delirious, like the drugs are. If making my own synchronicity seems like egocentricity, I've got my flaws but live life to the hilt. Love and do what thou wilt. Third eyes on like I got x-ray specs. We're driven to the edge of Cassandra complex, but we roll with the shocks. We're putting everything back in Pandora's box. The golden apple goes to the fairest. I'm dressed to thrill, all hail heiress. Sacrifice to Bacchus another Red Bull while giving thanks and being mindful of all the joy that surrounds us, even when all their bullshit hounds us. Back on Earth, where we live life, death, rebirth, and the afterlife. And I'm sailing away. Live in the now, live for today. The river sticks, we all will cross. In Hades, I'll be my boss. Non Serbia, I'll tell the ruler. We'll install central air. Now that's cooler. In the underworld, without a care. All my best friends are there. We'll open a club. We'll call it heaven. It'll be rocking 24-7. Orgiastic rebels. I'm not Joshin. Dionysian. Hieronymus. Boshin. We like it spicy. Got no taste for mild. Our party motor's running. Reborn to be wild. We're quantum mechanics under the hood. Meta programming for the common good. If Einstein's relativity is E equals MC squared, this means that good times are best when they are shared. Our cup runneth over a cornucopia. An underground network's created this utopia. We make the rules by which this game is played. Got a grip on the eternal golden braid. So if you're down with what we're professing, come with us, we're effervescing to these naked truths we're undressing. Love one another, it's a blessing. Thank you. Yeah, stuff. I've heard those before, but man, love one another, it's a blessing. What a powerful way to end a piece. What a powerful way. Lies going on. You have lies going on into infinity. Like, <laughs> oh man, it's so good to hear your words and see your smiling face. Brilliant, brilliant. Snap it up for him, guys. Uh, thank, you. thank you for uh, gracing us, being a first timer here. Um, you know, it's funny. I, I knew that in my head I wanted to say it, but I don't think of you as the first time I've seen you so many places, but I am honored that you chose to come here today. I get around, but uh, 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's my first time here and I'll be yeah. back. I'll I'd be love, back. love to definitely have you back, brother. Thank you so much for oh, your powerful I'm words. And new material <laughs> next. I know a lot of you have heard that stuff. Well, you know, I was sub poets, you know, so what? I mean, there's certain songs that we hear thousands of times, uh, you know, and yeah. I, I think one of the best ways for us to 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 really familiarize ourselves with each with each other is to hear our pieces more than one time. So, you know, I agree. Keep, keep I'm bringing, down with that. Yeah, keep bringing it. And, and you know, if we never position all oh, of I've said this before, we may not know, you know, so. You know, because sometimes we're so in the moment, and and it's it's not a personal thing. You know, I'll I'll hear a new song, and then I I may not remember I've, I've heard it until I've heard it a number of times. So, and particularly with certain poets, you want to hear some of their pieces more than once. So, bring it, man. Show up. Bring it. Gus, that's Gus a piece. Sorry, go ahead, Lance. Go ahead. Go ahead. Gustav and I did a collab for Elemental two weeks ago. Oh, did you? Oh yeah, at the New Eurekin. Brought the house down. Well, yeah, it was amazing. It was gonna so to, great. You're gonna have, you're gonna have to bring it here and share it sometime. So, <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll eventually get back. I do miss going to 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 Eurekin on Mondays and and Thursdays, but I just right now I'm just feeling I just don't feel the need to to be in the rooms. I need, you know, it's coming to the end of the year, and the end of the year I always get into this really deep reflective stuff, so I, I can feel that coming on. And then I'll you know family. I've been focused on other things, but. I know you guys are there. You're not going anywhere. And I'd love to hear the collaboration. Uh, I was, you know, I was fortunate to hear uh, Lantern and uh, Element uh, a, a few months ago do their collaborative piece. So anyway, guys, stuff well done. Good work, brother. Always good work. Um, let's continue on with the poets. We're getting to the end of the show. So I'm not sure if Neymar something came up, uh, but Neymar, if you're there and you're hearing us, please let us know. I'd love to hear you before we go. Uh, if not, let's continue on. Uh, he was having problems getting on and a number of people have had issues connecting. I've been getting Facebook messages of apologizing. I always tell people you don't need to apologize if you're meant to be here. And particularly when it's out of your control technology, if you can't connect, you can't connect. So, but I'm glad he was here. So I'm going to shut up and let's get him on. Hopefully, before hopefully he doesn't get booted off. You all know this young man. Uh, he, I just think he's he's a, just a brilliant mind. And again, he's got that infectious smile. But his words are powerful. It's an invitation. He's just a brilliant storyteller. Snap it up for some Kanto. I'm like you know uh, we we had like a whole Kojiko shutdown here. You know, so fuck Kojiko, but respect everybody. And I, I, I'm so happy that finally it worked out. So I'm, I'm just doing it from my phone. This was for my mom's birthday. I wrote it um, two days ago. Uh, three, actually. I wrote this poem not because you were born on this day, but because from out of space, <laughs> You arrived on planet Earth with such grace that your entrance made it seem like you were floating a few feet above ground. But eventually your crown weighed you down and as you lowered and touched the surface of the Earth, your essence forced the tectonic plates below to crash into each other, falling out of the kitchen sink where Mother Earth washes dishes with both cold waterfalls and hot lava. Mama, you shook the whole earth with your heart. The world and everything in it was all over the place. But you saw where each tiny molecule of everything around you had fallen and you put it all back together. Like Kintsugi, golden, exactly as it was. Because you are a goddess, Mama. And every magician and healer under the sun deserves their praise. I wrote this poem not because today is the day you were born, but because your birthday is mine too. It is the day I took my maiden flight on the wings of a huge mythical bird with wings that change colors to confuse the witches of this world. And it disappeared altogether when my soul started approaching your womb. If you had not been born 
I would still be sitting in this waiting room, looking up at whether the flight number would ever be called. And when you uttered your first cry of rhythm, the flight information display system came on. And I checked in my soul at the gate for the same journey that you had taken almost two decades and a half before my time. It is hard being a ghetto mother because we are sick or shame. The whole world will laugh at you with all different kinds of pain, Gaia. From rent to school fees to funeral tents for hire to being afraid to walk at night. With no one realizing that when you arrived from out of space, the light you were covered in was filled with every gemstone that the earth crust had ever known. That the broken tower lights on days when they would miraculously turn on were actually powered by your own fast beating heart as you walked in the darkness hoping they come back on and showered you with light to show you the way and protect you from the evil that men do. That the light in your eyes shone through not to magnify your tears, but to prove that all of the universe undiscovered gemstones had been building a home inside your eyes for years and lighting the path for my mythical birth Every time you looked up at the sky, a light so bright it changed the colors of my mythical bird's invisible wings so that witches would not shoot it down with their flexible slings. Oh, mama. We always swear we'll do everything for our mother. So my dream is that you hold on and drown the world's laughter, Mama. <laughs> no matter what form it disguises itself in, because the universe is always hiding a miracle. Huh, Mama? The universe always hides its best hand, saving it for when everyone had long already assumed that it had lost the game. Thank you. Oh, unmute, please, unmute, unmute. <clears throat> and snap it up for the contract. Oh, gorgeous. Yeah, what a great kitty for mom. Hey, your mother loved that. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. I'm listening to you recite that for your mom and this image of you sitting in a kukuli. It's an indigenous like igloo. Looking through the opening and watching yeah. your mother and going, okay, I want her to be my mom. <laughs> yes, that was the idea, actually, <laughs> yes. Like, that was, like, her, like, her birthday was my birthday because that's when I yeah. I was sitting at the airport waiting for my mythical bed. Because <laughs> when, when, when you said that line, your birthday is my birthday, that's the, and that, that imagery just carried through the whole thing. And, and it was funny, it was like you looking up, not you looking down, but you looking up and seeing all these possibilities and all these things happening and then and then seeing this spirit and going oh there's my mom i want her to be my mom in this time so can i do one quick one sure oh for sure please please because yesterday yesterday was um international men's day and uh, i i i felt that you know we can't just let it pass by because i performed this yesterday in person but i, I would love you know, yes, please. Day, oh. Because we always forget men's day somehow, you know. Yeah, okay. we always do. Okay. Some men would rather dig the village well than tell you they are not feeling well. Because they are told in this cold world, what good would it do to cry tears that wouldn't fill a single bucket? Whose thirst would it quench? Nothing but the quiet ego, because even though you had let go of every single thing that was holding you down, your own family is now running out of time and have to dig for water, because there is no way they are drinking your ocean of tears, because not only is it less, but it's also salty. Some men, like my father, 
they fought the war for independence and came back pulling grenade pins out of each sentence. But if you look at them close in their silent moments, when bombs were not exploding in their daydreams, you would find in that minefield a love that erupted with color across every single scar they got from the bullet. And it healed them instantly. You found a man with a conscience, a love, a patience, a black dove born to find peace and then told that to find that peace is through the barrel of a gun. They are men who have never been held. So they overcompensate by carrying the world on their backs, trying to imitate the mothers they watched as kids who carried their sons with so much joy as if bearing gifts to pay, tribute, to pay tribute to the God. So they cradled everyone's problem. But when the day came, when their backs were broken, they were told, man up! <laughs> it's only just a broken back. But what hit them the most had nothing to do with their spinal cord. But that at one point, they had been left abandoned on the side of the road. And when they carried the world on their back, it was as if to say, I will always lift anything off the beaten path because I will never want anyone else to be left for dead on the ground and be trampled to death every other time. There are men, so many men, with a love, a patience, black dove, told that their feathers are the wrong shade so they no longer fly from tree to tree but they soak their beautiful shiny duck wings in silent tears underneath that same tree's shade so spare a thought for them spare a thought for them because every last one of them is still a form they bleed rivers of pain that they do not want the world see because no one can quench thirst with blood even when they shed their own for others to dream so let us not call them weak let us just call them broken men because like kintsugi we all know broken things can be put back together again thank you It's like voices from the past have crawled into you because your young age does not indicate the wisdom that, that just flows from you. Each one of them are still a poem. Thank you for the reminder. You know, it's funny, I was, I've been building out my, my calendar for 2023, not just the features for this, but also the kind of specialty shows that I want to do. And one of the dates that I put down was International Men's Day. Because March 8th is International Women's Day. And I used to always do an International Women's Day. And a friend of mine, this is years ago, asked me, don't you ever do one for men? And I like, no. So thank you for that reminder. That uh, I love that line. Every last one of them are still a poem. Right? It's, it's just brilliant, brother. Brilliant. Well, well said, well penned. Um, and thank you for honoring us, men, and reminding, you know, we live in an age where it, it doesn't feel sometimes safe to be a man. Yeah, um, uh, I, I only did that because people confuse patriarchy and just being a man. Yeah. You know, being yeah. a man is a fellow human, but patriarchy is different. We all fighting the patriarchy because the patriarchy is fucked up. But the patriarchy is also you know the white industrial complex trying to make everybody polarized so i, I am i'm grateful for the people that can remember to say because mm -hmm. there are good men out there and mm -hmm. some of them commit suicide or have to go mm -hmm. homeless because they are afraid they won't be called real men anymore so for those men one love respect yeah. well i agree I, you know i appreciate that I don't necessarily agree with the patriarchy and men because that's people not understanding what a patriarchy really is. It's not white. 
it's just a system of organization, but we're not going to get into yeah. politics. No, this I, is I, why I, I want to create. Yeah, no, no. I, call me afterwards. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why I, I want to create another vehicle where we can bring these poems and discuss them and, and dissect them and not to ridicule them, but to discuss them in a, in a more philosophical way because it's brilliant. It's just brilliant. But having said that, I understand why people feel that way. I, I get it. I get it. Trust me. I get it. Um, but we need poems like that. Whether you agree with it or not, we need poems. That we need reminders because, man, there is no humanity without man, without woman. End of story. We need each other, period. So anyway, thank you so much, brother. Thank you for always supporting and grace. And thank you for fighting through your technical issues. I, I know a lot of the East Coast is having issues with that big storm, so I'm glad you were able to get on. So um last but not least i'm going to bring up our feature who's going to be our feature next month um uh you know spiritual guru you know sage poet pick an adjective and stick it next to his name but i think we've all grown to love this man and and the brilliance and the spiritual nature of his words and his tone and the invitation to remember who we are and to remember who we are to look beyond who we are in these meat suits. So anyway, Anton Carrier, the floor thank is yours. You, thank you, thank you, my brother. Pranams to everyone. <clears throat> Salutation to my great brother, Rick, uh, the illustrious sage, plus plus. Revelations. The iridescence of the moon has no brush, yet she paints the night with a luminous glow. The stars have no voice for magical songs, yet they sing in the stillness of silence. The warmth of the sun kissing my cheeks awakens within my ancient smile like one raising Lazarus to life. Nature can be so beautiful it commands serenity from my lips, makes the heart graceful like a ballerina. No more the dark smells pervading my loneliness and guilt. The light of your luster washes my breath with a thousand rays of glimmer. Took me a while to comprehend, but you raised me like Lazarus once again. Attempting to transform my own nature the sweet nicotine rebelled within my thoughtened state. The toxic fumes of surreal experiments only hastened my demise. Yet you came in my predicament, shielding me from destructive forces. Now, wherever I think, whenever I think of you, my face glows like fireflies and the heavens blush, even as the dark night whispers bird songs in the magnificence of the soul. Mesmerized by the breaking of waves, I listen to the symphony of the wind, of how she speaks of time past and whispering dreams of the pain of millennial sorrows, the tenderness of love. I lie on the beauty of twilight, enchanted by the light of perennial entities which kiss my soul. The night sky holds my gaze, we dance on the crest of rolling tides as the wind continues or illumining conversations. She speaks of the magic of smiles, of the miracle of sunrise, and the moon kisses my cheeks as I bow in sacred gratitude. She sings of the glories of man, of the undaunted courage of a woman's sacrifice, and my heart becomes a field of prayer. She talks of life struggles, of how light shines in Jerusalem, even when the shadows are dense, that we can only measure the darkness by the rays of an effulgence we once knew. I listen, and my tears become a raiment for the beloved. Have wine, she says, go forth and love, for are not your, are not your desires the same adversity that will fashion you into gold? And how shall you laugh if you know no weeping? Be patient, for the weaving of the inner alchemist never ceases. She spins and spins a zillion revolutions until every indiscretion is wiped clean and the yarn returns to its state of grandeur. 
you are that yawn, you are that grandeur. Even though you may not feel it, I can see a trillion candles glittering in your core. Then the waves subsided and the wind blowed softly, gently caressing my spirit. The fire of my essence burned within the setting sun. Fear not, she said, before becoming silent. I am with you always, even under the edge of eternal time. Lantern Carrier, thank you. Yeah, I know we're featuring you next month, but you can't just do one and leave like that. No. <laughs> you no. want more? <laughs> At least okay. one more. You you can't just give us one and then just leave like that. What is that? <laughs> All right, let's see what I find here. Uh, I shall do <laughs> your reflection. I'll do reflection. That seems to be a nice one. I'm going to just start taping you and go to sleep to, to your voice, man. Just, just <laughs> words. When I peer through the short span of life, like an indigo sky through dreary clouds, I can see that I was where I was meant to be, and I am where the light has taken me so far. The inner alchemist has erased my struggles, even as the luminous moon has swallowed my shadows. I have been reborn a phoenix, and know by faith the supernal portals of tomorrow's destination. I was a mariner in boisterous waters, a turbulent hope searching for beacons. Now love resurfaces, an excalibur of light, removing with ease my bondage chains. No more the play of attachment desires. My toxic have vanished like ghosts. Wisdom has flooded the heart's constellations and my soul is as free as Akashic space. No stars twinkle and dawn awakes as I hear the symphony of starlings imbibe the grandeur of nature. Daybreak sings to me of love and I bathe in the glow of sunlit rays. I take her dreams as my pursuit and the wine of sweetness flows from my heart. My bumpy road of yesteryear is now a cool breeze and swirling snow. My queen and I have re-encountered. The happiness I sought is now before me, manifesting the beauty of my visions. Now I experience the utmost joy as we come together as one. I once was an emotive passion, yet a yielding to crimson blood. I entered this world to enjoy your dance became lost in the dunya of ignorance. Like malleable clay in the hands of my porter, I've become a peerless vase, the past vanishing like fleeting clouds. Hell is nothing but a place of refuge. An embryo concealed in darkness eventually becomes a creative soul. A cocoon emerges a butterfly. Now my empress and I watch Orion at nights bathe in a glow of nebulae. Destiny hides in our joys and sorrows, even as night does the sunset, until the lustrous dawn awakes in all its pristine glory. Ignorance, ignorance is a pane of glass, quietly reflecting my shadowy stains. It whispers ceaselessly to the mind to walk on the path of blades and fetters. Freedom is my mirror, wiped clean of all that stains it, burning a sparkling sweetness in the effulgence of the self. Lantern Carrier, thank you. Someone else in the chat wrote this probably the same time I just wrote it down. Destiny hides in our joys and sorrows. Now there's <laughs> a line. Wow, <laughs> there's a line. The good, the bad, the ugly, and the beautiful. That's what I say. To me, it's the same thing. That's just brilliant. Well, well, oh. you know, I, 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 I seriously, I, I could just record you and put you in an eight-hour loop and just go to sleep listening to you. I mean, I do that with the stoic 
philosophers and some of the other people I respect. So why not Lantern? You guys are illustrious poets. So coming from you, you know, all these illustrious poets in your on your platform, it's it's it's, it's, it's uh, I don't know, uh, it's it's the merit, it's merit. Which is well, the it, <laughs> well, it's the words in it. It's 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 how it resonates, and you know, it, yeah. to me, it, it it's it's images. Just, is, go ahead. Images is my speciality. It's a gift from mm -hmm. within. Um, I take no credit. Uh, have never taken any credit. Image. I, I like using images. I I create them. I, I listen to words and I I change them, and the lines come to me in a state of reverie and. Uh, hard for me to write without using images. Yeah, because it expresses best what I want to say. <laughs> One of the best things that happened to me this year was a collab with you. Uh, yes, I'll never forget that. Yeah. I'll never forget that. We One did of something on the greatest life, things right? to ever happen in my in my life. That yeah. was a powerful piece, man. It was. <laughs> Thank you so much for 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 crying, for blessing me with that collaboration. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, I appreciate you. You're a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I appreciate all of you uh, coming in and showing up and, and supporting ourselves, each other. Uh, yeah. In this instant, today, supporting our friend Richard in his feature. Uh, what a brilliant, brilliant uh, set today. Um, yeah. you know, well, I'll return to the prayer room in, uh, for another two hours very soon. And uh, I'll remember all you guys that my uh, 100 friends will be, you know, praying for the peace and the goodwill of the world. Okay. So uh, here in Germany, I'll remember all you guys. <laughs> well, we'll carry you with us today, my brother. Uh, Mercy just asked, how can we access the collaborate home that you and uh, yeah. Monte I those I uh, if you would. Advocate if, of what probably have yeah. actually I do have them all. If you go if you go on YouTube or on the New York uh, Poets Cafe uh, link uh, and look under the titles, you will see uh, under the theme Diwali uh, for the Festival of Lights. We actually came first. We were the first ones to perform. Okay. So just go under New York New York Poets Cafe and click under Diwali, the theme for Monday Night Poets. Um, you know, Monday night open mic, you will see that we were the very first ones to perform. Festival of Lights, yes. Yeah. Festival, of Lights, Festival yeah. of Lights. Rally, yeah. Festival so you should of be able to Lights. find that, uh, Mercy. If you can't find it, Mercy, just buzz me and I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can find it for you. I send. probably have them all on my computer also. Yeah, yeah. But uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, I said I wanted to try and keep this beyond... <laughs> two and a half hours well we're approaching two and a half hours although we did spend the first half hour talking so lantern thanks for we'll carry you on our hearts thank and, and you, rather have you, a have you. a good retreat good meditation and uh, i'll just say this i found this you know uh, i think the last show i said these and i really liked it and i pulled it out i'm eventually going to work on it but it's just a reminder to all of us it's not just the five minutes it's all the minutes of connecting and support it's not just Sundays. It's all the days that connect us to let us know we are together. It's not about, it's not about being alone and knowing that we are one. It's not just a month, but all the months that lead to a year where we can reflect upon with gratitude and humility and be reminded that we are human that we are in this life together to experience the good, bad, ugly, and the beauty. It's not just a year, for the year makes up a millennia, and that we are priceless, and that we can never be destroyed. This body that allows our human expression will pass one day, but we as spirit and energy, we are the flow that is life. So it's not just the minutes, it's everything that this experience has to offer. We are having individually and collectively that shapes our perspective. These five minutes that poets sit around and wait to share is a reminder that even if we don't always jive with each other's perspective, we are still connected in this singular view of life because it is life. 
So I invite you to tell your story and to share your perspective, to see yourselves in each other's words, to see yourself in each other's perspective. The mere fact that we breathe the same air means we are one. The mere fact that we are grounded to this planet by gravity means we are one. We will do things differently. We will express differently. But at the end of the day, we're all still doing the same thing. We're living this life. We're living this life. And it's only together we get to share this life, uh, this understanding. My heart is full. I woke up this morning feeling a bit off. And I showed up knowing that if you go through this and we go through together, I'm going to come out feeling good. So I thank you all for this. Once again, put our hands together for Brother Richard and a soulful, thought-provoking invitation of words. Storyteller extraordinaire to remind us that even though we may differ in how we think, we are still in this together. That's one of the beauties of his words. And thank you to all of you who show up to support each other. Whether we agree with each other's poetry or not, we show up to support each other. For those that just showed up and wanted to listen, for those that just showed up and wanted to support Richard in his feature, I thank you. I thank you for those who tried to get on but couldn't get on, that did get on and got booted off. For those who got here late but still showed up, I thank you. Thank you for supporting the Inspired Poetry Corner. But more importantly, thank you for supporting our humanity. We are moving forward and we are evolving, even in those days when it feels the heaviest and it feels like we're not, we are. Until next time, until next month, when we have the honor of featuring Lantern, I say be gentle with yourself so you can be gentle with others. I love you all. Have a blessed, blessed Sunday. Peace. 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 Inspire a child wherever you are. Yes. Salute. Salute. Yes. Go have a blessed day, people. You too, my brother. You too. Thank you, everyone. Specials to the guest, artist, and to everyone else, avid listeners also, all my friends. And Roll, you've been just always brilliant as a host. Thank you so much. My illustrious brother. <laughs>